times where we go to properties that those individuals themselves will we'll, we'll struggle to get the money to find to do those, but at least we've given them the information and can work with them about other schemes that might be available to work with them. So they're just some of the quick wins we're looking to do. So, Chair, I'll stop there and ask if there's any questions yeah. from, the, uh, from the audience or the members. Combination of, uh, it was a combination of both. Neil, I don't know whether you want to technically... Yeah, the, well, it's actually the Prenton Brook, just in the North, North Cheshire Trading Estate, and that is a main river, but it's just upstream of the River Fender. And um, as, as Ruth pointed out, some areas had combination flooding. So at, at the Cheshire Trading Estate, um, there was main river flooding from the Prenton Brook, but there was also surface water flooding because there was just no capacity for the water to get into the river. Oh, yeah. um, thanks, Chair. Well, at, at the time this happened, there were, there were issues around communication, there were issues around uh, people being able to get through, trying to ring the council, not being able to get an immediate response to the problem. Have we thought about the possibility of having a floodline number? Now, I don't mean something that is permanently staffed. I mean a number that people can have in their useful contacts the event that it happens, we have that line staffed immediately because although we didn't have a weather warning, a weather alert in, in advance, when it happened we knew it was happening. You know, we knew there were areas getting flooded because you know we were getting called. If that line went into response, I know there's the website and all the rest of it, but people like to be able to pick up the phone when they've got a problem and get get some help immediately, don't they? You know, have we thought about that kind of um, in terms of lessons learned, in terms of what we're going to do in the future? Yeah. I'm pleased to say yes we have. <laughs> and I'm pleased to say on that incident what we've actually done, and I probably should have covered it in, in, the, in the initial steps we've done in the quick wins. Um, we know at times when, when incidents like this occur that the, 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 the council's call centre is not going to be able to cope with the demand that's coming in. Now, you've got to understand that in terms of primacy about flooding information, the Environment Agency have the primacy over that. But what we've done is we've worked with the Environment Agency and they have a national flood line support system and we've now tied up that when these incidents occur, through the council's normal contact numbers, we can divert those numbers to, the, to that national call centre arrangements, which will give more capacity and at least somebody then will be able to give their message of where it is and, and, and we can give a message back. So yeah, we, we are doing that. Thank you. And then, sorry, George, I was just saying, it's already been mentioned tonight, but so, you know, we've got our community publication, we're all here. Yeah. Yes, These absolutely. are the kind of things, you know, emergency <laughs> numbers and stuff like that, that the public, yeah. that this is going to every home and we're all more people to have it. Absolutely, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because well, <laughs> that's, that's how a number of times. Maybe we're going to clear, the, clear it better in future. But uh, all these things can have a, a knock on effect, can't it? It, it, it? That means the water gets away faster, but it can cause a, a problem somewhere else. Yeah, I think there's some myths, and, 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 and Neil probably can yeah. 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 the, the answer is the responsible body for uh, flood risk from Main River is the Environment Agency, so they should really be answering that question. But um, I do know that they have looked at the Friends of Brook. Um, have recognised that there should have been some desilting in there. Um, taking flood risk into account, they have undertaken that now. So they make that assessment about whether the desilting um, will increase flood risk elsewhere. And in this, in this case, they, they came to the decision they could undertake that work. Yeah, you know, it's going to close a main artery. Well, even if it's 
uh, and the northern lights. That's the main route that goes from Quebec there to the hospital. I, I wasn't aware Scottish Power had this emergency room in the area. I remember asking years ago, Andrew Rhodes, uh, the name from the <laughs> why, why does this happen, Andrew? You know, he said, the drains aren't big enough. Now, that's an infrastructure problem from our point of view, isn't it? We're aware then that some of our infrastructure isn't up to scratch, you know, on a general run of the mill rate day. Should we be looking to improve that, particularly as it does impact the likes of Scottish Power, the main route to the hospital? I mean, we saw what happened last weekend when the motorway was closed between two junctions. The whole of the world was, again, gridlocked. So, what, what work is being done okay, so to, to, to uh, if you like, solve the problem in the junction three? Okay, so um, in, terms of the, in terms of the actual um, action plan itself and this investigation, and, and you're right to think about areas where um, the surface water uh, uh, drainage system um, requires extra maintenance to keep it clean, etc, etc. Et if you're talking about capacity and size of drains, then surface water drains are designed uh, to, to a standard across the country. So in terms of that change and, 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 you, and, and whether the capacity is big enough or not enough to, to be a local authority that, that may go out on a limb to say they're going to increase that capacity. It, it takes a, sufficient, uh, a significant amount of obviously <coughs> funding to get to that point. So what we're doing on the Durley one specifically is, we do think there's gonna, we need, there, there probably needs to be an engineering solution to it, but as part of that, there's a, there's a technical group which is UU Environment Agency, the council, and they will look at all of these and, and look at solutions in terms of technical solutions or other solutions and present those in terms of it going forward. So we always know we're going to have areas that I call them puddling, but it's, it's, it can be more than that, um, uh, uh, Councillor Kelly. You know, it can be areas where it actually does block those bits of road, and we look to get resources out there, whether they're gully summers and things straight away to, 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 to deal with those. But to redesign our whole surface water system, you can see in areas where they have done it, where the business case stacks up to do it. And one of the examples would be uh, what we did up in um, uh, Morton. Um, um, on Reeds Lane, sorry, I put that the escape bin. So Reeds Lane, they did a large civil engineering project where they put a capture tank in, in, in a school grounds there. So it's that type of solution.